you, Father God, that everything I say edifies you and everything I say, Father God, exalts you, God. And thank you, God, for every single listener on today. And who's going to hear this word, oh, Father? Let their ears be open and eyes be open, oh, God, for what you have to say, oh, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And so the title of today's message that I have, and I won't be before you long, is Will the Real Prophets Please Stand Up? And so um, the Lord had me drop into um, 1 Kings 17 about two weeks ago, and I've been continuing right in that same um, in those same passages. And so now we last week we were in First uh, Kings um, chapter 17, and now we are dropping into 18. And so a backstory of everything that happened right in these scriptures are that. Um, Elijah was running. He was running from Ahab. He was running from Jezebel. Um, Jezebel wanted to kill the prophets, right, that were um, speaking the truth, that were, um, Elijah was one, he was a reformer, right? He was someone who um, brought correction. He was someone who um, wanted to make sure that he delivered God's word and wanted to make sure he said what God told him to say. Um, and God told him to speak no matter what they, you know, have to say, no matter what the people think. He went and he made sure he brought the word of the Lord. And so Jezebel was not happy with that. And so we're going to see a little bit about that. We're not going to read every single thing, but I wanted to highlight um, what God is doing in this season. And so um, we're going to read here. It says that in verse 21, verse Kings 18 and 21, it says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, hovering between two opinions? If the Lord God is is if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. So in that time, they were following. There were prophets even that were following Baal. They were following um, false idols. They, they, Baal was a false idol, so they were following um, idolatry, right? And in this time and season. God is saying that he's going to be bringing down the, what is false, okay? He's going to be bringing down what we see as false because many have been deceived in the body of Christ and many have been looking towards false things, false gods, false prophets, false teachers, and they have not seen um, um, and they don't. They have been deceived. It says it in the scripture. And so it says, um, Elijah, this is what I have in my notes, reprove the people for mixing worship of God and worship of Baal together. So there has been a mixture that has come into the body of Christ. There has been a mixture that has been cut, has come in by way of media, by way of social media, and that, and even just, you know, teachings in the churches, there's been a mixture. God is dealing with the mixture. And God says that is, that is, it's not right. And that he is going to be taking it down. And this is the year we're going to see um, some of those things happen, some of those things unveiled, because we, the, the people who are bringing in the false teachings, right, we're, we're, are halting in between two opinions. We're halting between two thoughts. It's either we worship God or you worship Baal. Who, who do you serve? And this is what the scripture is saying. You cannot worship God and the devil at the same time. You cannot worship God and be in idolatry at the same time. You must uh, serve the true and living God, right? We must not mix and bring a mixture into into what is the correct and what in the word of God you cannot bring mixture you not cannot add or subtract from what the word says and so um it says they worship God to please the prophets right but worship Baal that God worship to please God they worship God to please her but the worship Baal to please Jezebel so those prophets were there to try to please Jezebel. They were there for some kind of finance, for some kind of gain that she was giving them. Um, it says that Jezebel in a verse um, number 19, it says that Jezebel supported um, the the uh, the prophets, right? They were supported by her. And so Jezebel was a false prophetess. She was one who, and I'm going to go against talk about some of her um, characteristics here, but it was that she was one who um, had a false uh, spirit of, um, um, of immorality and she was into seducing and things like that and, and, and to getting other people to sin, right? And so the Lord says we cannot play both sides in this season. You're going to have to choose whom you're going to serve. Or do you serve God or do you serve Baal? Do you serve God or do you serve Satan? Who are you deciding to serve? And so the scripture tells us who um the one who believes on the Lord, who believes he was risen on um, that third, you know, on the third day, who believes he died on the cross for our sins, who believes those things, um, those are the ones who believe who God is. It says there's only one God, right? We know that there's only one God. His name is Jesus. He is he that is not with God is against him. And so we see all these teachings and 
things happening and um, there's miracles and uh, signs that look like miracles and signs, right? And I'm going to go over some of those scriptures right now um, that look like miracles and signs, but they are false. They are false because there, there's a mixture there. And so when there's a mixture there, it's called false teaching, false you know, prophecy. Okay. And it says the servants is what I have written as my notes, the servant of God and the service of sin does not mix your, their heart is divided. So there has become a division there. Something has entered in that is not true. Something has entered in that is not accurate. Something has entered in that is not according to the word of God. See, this is what we believe, right? The scriptures. And so when we start having things come in, that is where, you know, the error happens. And that is where people become deceived. Okay. It says, um, I have here Jezebel, false prophet. She was one into idolatry. She was one into sexual immorality, causing others to be seduced into sin. Um, pr prophet of seduction. She is one to seduce. Um, she is um, after to kill prophets, right? And so it, it'll ma it will make people or make prophets want to hide. And so God is saying, this is the time and season for prophets to stand up. It's time and season for prophets to speak. It's time and season for prophets to say what thus saith the Lord, because that is what is going to, um, to cut, cut, you know, out uh, shine what is happening right now is when the real prophets come up and speak. And when the true prophets come and speak, we know what is, is, is happening. We know this is true. We know this is false. And so the spirit of Jezebel was after to kill them, right? After those who are speaking the truth, after those who are speaking what God is saying. She was after Elijah because of what he was speaking, because he did what God was telling him to do, right? Don't be afraid if you're a prophet, if you even if you're a person who has to speak what God is telling you to speak, you're, you're telling it, saying what you have to say, right? But somebody is upset that you're saying it. There's a Jezebel spirit that's coming out, trying to come after you, that's afraid of you, afraid of what you're going to do, afraid of you speaking for God, right? Because there's a spirit of control and manipulation, but we cancel that in the name of Jesus. So it says, and for Jude 1 and 11, it says, prophets had run greedily in era of Balaam for prophets. So that's also a false prophet, someone who is trying to run after money, run after those things um, that they feel, you know, you get a, pro you, you, in order for you to get, get a prophet, so you have to pay. And that is not what the scripture says. Scripture says, Jude 1 and 11, prophets have run greedily in era of Balaam for profit. So you should not be paying for a prophetic word. God has given prophet a gift, Right to give the, the word freely because it is a gift that we've been given, right? It's a gift. I've been given a gift of prophecy. So I'm going to give that gift freely. I'm not going to withhold. And I'm not, you know, that's what we, we, we we're seeing in this time and day. We're seeing where people were, or false teachers, prophets are, are expecting monetary, you know, for, and yes, you need to bless. We should bless. The Lord said, you know, talks about that in the scripture where, you know, if you bring a, a you know, prophet, a glass of water, you will be rewarded. So I do believe in blessing, but also the prophet should not be their ministry solely based on your, you know, working off of this prophetic word. I need, you need to give me, you know, this amount of money. That is not scripture. And so, Exodus 7 11, 7, 11 through 12 says, they turn, and this is talking about the miracles, the signs, and wonders. They turn their rods into serpents. So that is false. That is miracles, signs, and wonders, yes, used by the enemy, used by the devil, but it's not, it's not, it's not good. It is a mixture. Um, Acts. In Acts, it talks about how Simon the sorcerer deceived many people through magical powers. That is a mixture. It's not, it's not right, right? It's not, it's not from the word. Any miracle that does not bring glory to God and uh, to further the gospel is rooted in demonic influence. Any word, any word that you receive, right? Any miracle that is not bringing glory to God. So everything should go and turn right back to God, right? If you see the false teachings, the false prophets, the false this, the false that, and they're turning, you know, the, the the attention to themselves. That is false. It is wrong. It is not. It is not biblical because it says that the glory should belongs to God, right? It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to a man. It doesn't belong to a person. We should all be pointing back to Jesus. Type that in the comments. We should all be pointing back to Jesus. Okay. We need to test the spirit right? They don't believe, um, that they, that people who don't believe in Christ's identity, they don't believe in, in, you know, he was rose and on, risen on the third day. They don't, a third day, they don't believe that he was, um, you know, um, what he, he died on the cross. They don't believe those things. So if you don't ever hear of, you know, false teachers, pro false prophets talking about, um, you know, Jesus, and they're not pointing you back to Christ and they are, you know, going away from what the, you know, the, the, the Bible, um, 
then that is incorrect. We must test the spirit. And that's how we know those are signs of false prophets, right? They must confess that Jesus is Lord and came in the flesh, right? Just as we see Simon the sorcerer, he was a false prophet have, and he created idols out of themselves, allowing people to worship them instead of God, right? We're not supposed to make people worship us. We're supposed to point them back to Jesus. And so if you ever see that where someone is trying to make you worship them, that is incorrect. That is not accurate. Type in the comments, we must point back to Jesus. I already said that before, but we have to say it again because God has to get the glory. And so what he's doing in this year is he's going to be shifting some things in the church. He's going to be shifting some things. He's going to be correcting some things because the, the glory has been taken away from him. And God, our God is a jealous God, right? So we, he wants the glory, right? And nothing that it, we that a person does, if, it, if it's taking that away from God, then he's going to correct it. Um, Balaam, right? Well, let's talk about Balaam. He was good at first, but began to use his gift for personal gain. And we talked about that for material things, for money. So sometimes people can go off, right? But we need to be stared back into the right way. Okay. So what else do I have? I have here, Deuteronomy 13 through one through four says, um, if a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you, okay, this is in the word. Um, so we always go back to the word and announces to you a mir miraculous sign or wonder. And if the sign or wonder which he has spoken takes place and he says, follow other gods and let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of the prophet or the dreamer. The Lord God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart, with all your soul. It is the Lord, your God, who must you must follow and in him you must revere. So right there we see that if a prophet comes to you showing you miracles, signs and wonders, that that is that and, and it doesn't have it's not following Christ and the prophet is telling you to follow something else, false doctrine or telling you to follow something else that's not biblical then right there, that's that's called a mixture. And that is, it says right there, do not follow the prophet or dreamer. The Lord is testing you to find out, do you love him with all your heart? Do you love God with all your heart? Do you love God with all your soul? Do you love God with all your mind? Do you love the Lord? How do you know? And so this these scriptures help you not to be deceived in these last days. And so um, I have here some signs of false prophets, right? F fruit is not godly. The fruit is not godly. I'm not going to go through every single one, but the fruit is not godly. Uh, they can be listed legalistic and religious um, uh, uh, rather than um, what Jesus teaches, you know, with, you know, love is patient, love is kind. And, you know, we have, there's balance here in scripture, right? But they can become very legalistic, spirit of religion. Uh, we also, they're mixing relief, beliefs. Um, and Deuteronomy says not to add or subtract um, from his word. We should not add or subtract from what the Bible says. If the prophet is not speak, whatever they're speaking should go right back to the word, right? Um, they have a love for money. So they're using their gift to gain, gain mo monetary gain. That is on, um, not, in, you know, they should not do that. Um, twisting scripture. That's another thing as well. Um, they're not repentant and they're not obedient, right? Um, they're living a lifestyle of sin. Pastor talked about yesterday, we were talking about the soul and the mind and the will and emotions. We've been talking about that and how you can make a mistake. Yes, people make mistakes. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But if you're living in the sin, if you're making it a lifestyle, that's the issue, right? The issue is not the mistake. If people make mistakes, right? But when we could we continue in that, and so there's no repentance in that in the false prophets. There's no repentance. There's no obedience. Um, so my uh, admonishment to you today is stop listening to every um, wind of doctrine, and and if the spirit must be tested. Right, every wind of doctrine. That's what we're seeing now because there's so many people out there. There's so many um, people who have you know have a platform now. They they're able to speak on these things. But if it's not pointing back to God, and that's fine if you have that. You know, we all have a platform to speak, but it must always be pointing back to Jesus. It was, must always be pointing back to God. So I'm gonna pray. Thank you, God, for this message. 
that you have me to deliver on today, oh God, coming out of 1 Kings 18, oh Lord. We thank you, oh God, for every person that's listening on today, oh God, that you will open up the ears and eyes, Father God, and open up their eyes, oh God, for what to what the scripture says, oh God, so we do not be deceived in these times and days, oh God, that Father God, what you're going to do, oh Father, in this season is raise those ones up, Father God, who, who Father God, who are the prophetic, to raise those ones up, Father, who are the prophets, raise those ones up, oh God, who want to teach the right thing, who want to prophesy the right thing, oh God, and raise them up, oh God, so that, and that they are not afraid, oh God, to speak what you want them to speak and say what you want them to say, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. So join me back here on Thursday, and I'm going to be continuing in First Kings um, chapter 18, and we're going to continue um, some things that the Lord wanted me to talk about in these passages. And so I hope that that ministered to you on today. God bless. <laughs>